This Brick Breaker game was entirely built by AI agents. All of the ideas were brainstormed by a game design agent, all of the code was written by a coding agent, and even the project management was done by an agent. Okay, I admit, this is just a very simple version of Breakout. You have a paddle, a ball, and some bricks, and you can hit the bricks with the ball. The score counter isn't even implemented, and when the ball falls off the screen, it doesn't reset, but it's something. The definition is still emerging, but an AI agent can be defined as an LLM call, such as ChatGPT, feeding back into itself with the addition that the LLM can also execute commands that actually accomplish concrete changes. This particular agent was created in Rivet, the open source visual AI programming environment. It probably took somewhere around 1 to 2,000 calls to GPT-4 to get to this point. AI agents have a variety of uses and are an emerging field, but the ability for an AI to take actions, reflect on those actions, and then take more actions is a powerful one. This project was not without its faults. The agents would constantly make mistakes, retread ground they had already covered, completely fail at fixing compiler errors, and sometimes just make things worse. A few times, my patients ran out and I went in and fixed the code for them. Other times, I nudged them in the right direction with some verbal guidance. That's why I like to call this a human-assisted AI project, in contrast to the current AI-assisted tools out there like Copilot and ChatGPT. Overall, I still call this project a success, because the agents were able to create something resembling a game. There's no doubt in my mind that agents and the frameworks to build them will rapidly get better over time. For right now, let's take a look at how this agent was implemented in Rivet. On the left, you can see all of the graphs that compose this game creator agent. We'll go over them all, but let's start with the main graph at the top, which is the one that's currently selected. The agent is actually composed of a number of sub-agents, and agents are allowed to execute other agents. The main graph is considered the project manager agent, its main role is to determine what to do next and then delegate everything to other agents. On the left side of the graph, we determine the current agent's task. This is a graph input, which defaults using an if-else node to a system message that the project manager agent is given at the start. Each agent is started with two system messages, the overall system prompt, the one of the graphs, and the agent's task to accomplish. The first message is fed into a loop controller as the first message in a series of messages being sent to the LLM. The list of messages goes into a trim chat messages node in order to clip off messages from the beginning until we get under the LLM's context window. This allows the agents to run for any length of time where they will simply forget older information that they don't have room for. We send this list of messages and the shared system prompt into the LLM. After the call, we feed the response into the run API command subgraph. This graph is responsible for running the commands that the agent has called. The current chain of messages, the LLM's response, and the response from run API command are all appended together and go back into the loop controller for the next iteration of the agentic loop. If the agent says a special call system command task finished, then we return false for the continue port on the loop controller. That allows us to bail out of the agent loop and return to whatever agent called it. Let's take a look at the run API command subgraph. This graph is responsible for parsing LLM responses and extracting machine readable commands from them. It starts with two checks. The first checks for the phrase system message in the LLM response. Sometimes the LLM makes a mistake and tries to imitate the system. This catches that. Next, it checks for the presence of call system command twice. Despite the system prompt stating that the agent can only call one system command per call, even GPT-4 likes to sometimes call multiple commands in one message. This catches that and returns an error message instead of executing invalid commands. Next, we use a couple of code blocks to parse the command. The first parses out the command being called, and the second parses out the arguments to the command which are the block of text after the call system command message. Next, the command name and arguments go into a match node, which has each possible command the agent can run. Using this, we delegate the actual execution of the command to subgraphs. Only the subgraph that matches which command the agent called will be executed. The arguments are passed into the subgraph as its only input. There are also some checks 
for invalid commands to return an error message. Only one subgraph will be executed, so we pipe all of the results into a coalesce node. This will choose the first non-null input, which will be the result of the subgraph that was executed. Finally, we take the output, combine it with some text to make it more readable, and return it back to the agent as the command output. Let's take a look at the commands the agent is able to run. Read file is as it says. The agent can pass a single file name and it will read the contents of that file and return it. All file names are relative to a hard-coded base directory, which you can see is one of the subgraphs. The read files command is the same as read file, but it can read multiple files at once. This is the one the agent picks most of the time. No matter how many files are passed in, it will only return the first five of them to avoid flooding the LLM with more text than it can handle. The request user feedback graph is simple. The argument text turns into a user input node, which asks the user a question and returns the user's answer. The agent uses this to ask for feedback about how the game's progress is going because the agent cannot actually play the game itself. This is a major part of the human-assisted part of the game development. The save to shared memory command lets the agent save a block of text to a shared memory between all agents. Its effectiveness is debatable, but the command exists. The shared memory is included in the system prompt to all agents. The shell command command lets the agent execute shell commands in the configured directory for creating the game. This is, as you can probably guess, dangerous and ill-advised. However, the agent can use this to try to build the game and get compiler errors, which is essential for it to self-correct problems. The show files command lets the agent list all files in the configured directory. It simply reads the directory and prints out the file names, one per line, with a little bit of helper text. The write file command is similarly dangerous to shell command, but it is essential for this project. It lets the agent write a block of text to a file. The agent codes the game by calling write file with the code of the game. The name of the file is on the first line, and the rest of the lines are the contents of the file. Something to note is that GPT-4 loves to put markdown blocks around code. Of course, we don't want to include those markdown blocks in the actual file, so we use a code node to strip them out and only grab the code inside the pair of code markers. Additionally, there is a call at the beginning of the graph to ask GPT-4 if the extracted contents contain any placeholder text. GPT loves to write things like, this code remains the same. So if GPT detects any placeholder text, it will return an error message from the command, instructing the agent to try again with the full contents of the file. I will say that this has been very effective at correcting the agent when it does something stupid. The final command is call agent. This lets the agent call any other agent. The first line is the agent name, and there are seven different agents that can be called. The rest of the text is the request made to the agent. Those are extracted at the beginning of the graph here. The agent name and arguments are passed into a match node the same way as run API command. Let's take a look at the first agent, the analyzer agent. You'll see that this is simply calling the main graph with a custom system prompt. That's really all that most of the agents do. They have a fresh message history and a tweaked system prompt to better instruct the individual agents on how they behave. The analyzer agent specializes in analyzing code and answering questions about code, and thus has its GPT temperature set to zero so that it is most likely to give the same answer every time. The brainstorming agent does not call into the main agent loop, but simply brainstorms ideas based on what has been requested of it. There's a check at the beginning to have GPT answer yes or no based on whether the input arguments have enough context. If the answer is no, an error message is given back instead. This lets the caller agent try again, making sure to include enough context for the brainstorming agent to be effective. The coder agent is designed to be an expert coder, but it also is just calling the main agent loop with a custom system prompt, giving it instructions on how it should be a coder. The designer agent is a graphic designer that can create SVG art assets. This one wasn't really used in the demo, but it's there. The documentation writer agent is specialized in writing documentation files for the game. Its effectiveness is marginal, because the documentation becomes outdated as the game changes, but it's used fairly often by the project manager agent. This graph simply asks GPT for what file it will be editing, 
reads that file in, and then asks the agent to write the new contents of the file. This way, the agent doesn't clobber existing documentation and prefers to append and change the documentation. The overview agent is specialized in giving overviews of the project. It reads files, summarizes them, and returns the summaries. The project manager agent loves to call this agent. The single file coder agent is like the coder agent, but is specialized in making changes to one single file. At least that's the intention. The coder agent loves to ask the single file coder agent to make changes to multiple files. However, it still works fine editing multiple files. This agent does most of the actual coding of the game. And that's it. The entire game creator agent was made from these graphs. And after hours of chugging away, it made a game. The agent's effectiveness definitely slowed down the larger the game got because every single change could cause multiple files to need changing and then the agent would get entirely bogged down fixing or failing to fix compiler errors. There are definitely improvements that could be made to this agent, but in terms of a proof of concept, I think it's pretty cool and relatively successful. The agent is available at the URL in the description for anyone to try out and play with and tweak. Rivet is available at rivet.ironcladapp.com. Thanks for watching.